say it's going to start at 8 a.m. It's, it's nice to start by at least 8 o'clock. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And how is there? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, that's right. He is risen indeed. And that's what we're here to celebrate together this morning. Uh, we are going to have some time of singing. I'm going to be reading some scripture that has to do with uh, that that very first Easter Sunday morning, and, uh, and we're going to hear some testimonies of what does Easter mean, or what, what difference has Easter made in, uh, in our lives. I want to start off with, uh, with prayer. Would you, would you pray with me? Father, would, would you be glorified in our worship here today? We give you praise and thanks because you are the almighty God of the universe who created us, who loved us in spite of our rebellion against you, who sent your son to lay down his life to pay the penalty for our sins, who rose again on the third day. Death could not keep him in the grave. Because you, Lord, are Lord over death itself. And you offer that resurrection life to all of us who trust in you. And so this is a day of celebration. This is a day of remembering. This is a day of praising your name. And that's what we want to do here today. Help us to do it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's uh, use our, these sheets of paper. If you didn't get one, we do still have some extra ones. Does anybody need one? They're not doing any good down front here. If, okay, you can share with a neighbor. If, if you don't have a nearby neighbor to share with, if you don't have a neighbor to share with, go sit next to somebody. <laughs> You're allowed to get up and wander around during the, the service. I have to say that because my son will be doing it in a moment, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's start off with number 235. If you just turn the page to Christ arose. Let's sing all three verses. <laughs>
unpack it here to two number 50, 250, Jesus Christ is risen today. It is actually the last one. Let's sing together. Jesus Christ is risen today.
collection taken from Matthew's Gospel. It's found in Matthew chapter 28. If you uh, want to follow along in your own Bible, you're welcome to, to do that. <clears throat> this is what Matthew 28 has to tell us. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing as white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you see Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. And then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. And they ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This uh, Matthew's account here talks about two Marys that went to the tomb that Sunday morning. And what they saw there was something incredible. They saw the stone rolled back, an angel sitting on it, the guards were fainted, they became like dead men, I take that to mean they, just, they fainted, they passed out from sheer fright. And, and the angel says, don't be afraid, Jesus is alive again, just like he said he would be. And what's the next thing the angel tells them? Go and tell, go and tell his disciples that you saw the, rest, the empty tomb, go and tell them that Jesus is risen again and tell them that, that he's going before you into Galilee. He's going to meet you. And then as they're running off to tell the disciples, Jesus all of a sudden steps out of the woods or something, you know, he doesn't say, it just says that he met them. Did he appear all of a sudden on the road in front of them? Was he hiding behind a bush? I mean, who knows? But he met them. And, and they were like, oh. And he said, don't be afraid. And then what did he say to them? Go and tell my brothers that I'm going before you into Galilee. And so that's what we have the opportunity to do as we celebrate Easter as well, right? We have the opportunity to go and tell people what we've seen. That we have encountered the resurrected Christ. I hope we all have encountered that resurrected Christ. We've seen him working in our lives, and we have the opportunity to go and tell others what we've seen and what we've experienced. We don't have Mary Magdalene and the other Mary with us this morning, but I did ask two ladies to share a brief testimony with us today about the question, what difference does, ha has Easter made in your life? What difference has the fact of the resurrection made in your life? Um, how has it given you hope or joy or whatever? Um, and so I'll invite them to come share. Ginny, would you like to go first? <laughs> One of the songs that we haven't sung yet, which is in our, our packet here, is He Lives. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. And another verse goes on to say, in all the world around me, I see his loving care. I think I can testify to that in my life. The Lord is risen. He is my Lord. I had the privilege of being raised in a Christian family who brought me to know the Lord at an early age. I accepted, actually accepted the Lord in children's church at church. So 
So that's a, a ministry that is very heavy on my heart. Um, and that night, my mom talked to me. I, um, our church, children's church leader, I think, told her, guess what, you know. And she talked to me and made sure that I understood what I, what I had done. So I thank the Lord that he is living, that he came into my life. And I also thank him for his loving care that I have seen all through my life. At Calvary, he was my sacrificial lamb. He gave himself for my sin. But he also then, through my life, has been my shepherd. And I praise him for that. I feel <clears throat> a lot of times I haven't always felt like to give a testimony because I don't have one of those really great, oh, I was doing this and I was into that. It was awful. But he saved me. But you know what? The Lord told me I did save you from all of those. Praise the Lord. I, he saved me from those before I got into them. So I praise the Lord because whether you have a testimony that you were into drugs or into crime or whatever, the Lord saved you out of, he still saved us out of that, even in those of us who he saved at an early age. So I thank him because he has dealt with me as his lamb all of my life, and I praise my shepherd.
how he has overcome the world. So just like now, we get to share, as I'm like sharing this hope that God has, like we get to share with others of the hope that Jesus has overcome death, has risen. Thank you, Jenny and Becca, for sharing with us just some glimpses of the, the hope of resurrection that you've experienced. And uh, I want us all to be thinking about this theme, at, even as we go from here. Maybe, maybe as we're sitting around the tables eating breakfast together, uh, you could take the opportunity to ask somebody at your table, hey, so what difference has the resurrection made in your life? Um, Try to sit at a table with somebody that you've never talked to before. Wouldn't that be exciting? Some of you were like, yeah, keep dreaming, Pastor. <laughs> but but let's, let's be people who not only benefit from the resurrection in our own lives, not only go and see the empty tomb for ourselves, but who then go and tell. Go and tell others what we've seen and tell people about this hope that we celebrate each year at this time, but then hopefully all throughout the year, right? We, we keep reminding ourselves of the hope of the resurrection as we, as we go throughout the year. At least we should. That's my challenge to you. Who are you going to share this hope with? Let's end with, uh, Harold, if you're willing to help us out one more time. I do appreciate all of Harold's hard work for us. Uh, let's sing number 238, Because He Lives. This is the hope that we talk about, right? Because he lives, we can face tomorrow, we, we can have peace, we can have hope, and our life is worth the living because we know he lives. Let's sing it together. <laughs> Let's go have some delicious food. <laughs> I should have a little thing.